questions. Well, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, like you, we are focused right now on the Ukraine, and best of luck on your mission there. Uh, we have taken concerted action, uh, uh, clearly condemning this act of Russian aggression there. We have supported legislation to bolster the economy there and to, uh, uh, to take certain steps which I think will bring some leverage to bear. But there is one other step we could take that, in my view, would really give us a hammer over Russia. Fifty-two percent of the support for their military and their budget uh, and their government comes from their export of natural gas and, and oil into, you know, overseas. And most of that is their monopoly position that they have in Eastern and Central Europe. And it, it does seem that if the administration would move to allow the export of natural gas into the Ukraine, that that would send a powerful signal that we could indeed do something here that would produce American jobs. After all, we are flaring a lot of gas here. We are we're actually uh, uh, capping a lot of our wells. If we exported that specifically to that market, it might take time, but once we made that signal, uh, investors would uh, then put up, put up the, uh, the terminals necessary for us to do it, and it would go into the calculus in Moscow about whether or not they wanted to lose that position. And it might bring them to the table, and I wanted to raise that issue with you. Well, we are all for it, Mr. Chairman. And uh, in fact, the Department of Energy has the jurisdiction over this within the administration. They have issued six licenses already for 8.5 billion cubic feet per day uh, to be exported to uh, free trade and non free trade countries, including Europe. So it is uh, it's a possibility. Now, the first major project to export gas is not going to take hold until sometime in 2015. So but, but since we are in March, Ukraine's needs are you know, such that they ought to be able to get, if, if there is any manipulation of gas with respect to leverage by Russia, Ukraine will be able to weather it. And in the long run, we are prepared, and I hope others will be prepared to help shift the uh, current energy dependency. I think that is great. I, those those uh, six have been over, over a three-year period. And it's only six. I think there's 24 pending. So anything that could be done to accelerate that and actually open that up for Ukraine and, and Eastern Europe would be, uh, I think, very helpful. Another issue I wanted to ask you about was Iran. We had a situation where several hundred rockets, long range ones, um, that would otherwise have threatened Israel uh, were intercepted. They were coming from an Iranian arms shipment, and they were headed to Gaza. And to me, that is a much better indication of Iran's lack, lack of good faith than anything they are signing at the negotiating table. But in terms of response to this particular violation, uh, which is actually a violation of a, of a U.N. Uh, requirement there on Iran, what will be the response at the uh, U.N. Sanctions uh, Committee, and will the U.S. support additional terrorism sanctions as a result of Iran being caught in the act here uh, with this violation? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, obviously we need to take uh, some kind of action, and uh, it has not yet been determined uh, precisely what. But let me just say, we worked very, very closely with Israel uh, in the uh, discovery and then ultimately the apprehension of this ship. And we didn't do it because we don't want to uh, create accountability. We, we want to obviously have the strictest accountability. So uh, it uh, is very much on the table. I can't tell you today what the decision will be, but I can tell you that we obviously take it very seriously, which is why we worked at it. And I don't disagree with you. It, it you know, it's. Uh, it, it, it underscores the reasons why we are so determined to put in place a no nuclear weapon policy that is fail safe in our ability to be able to make those judgments, because uh, obviously there is a clash of other interests that will not be reconciled by any nuclear deal. 
Lastly, lastly, Mr. Secretary, as you know, this committee has been at the forefront of the scourge of human trafficking. Uh, we have seen abuses involving fraudulent recruitment of people overseas. They are promised decent jobs in the United States, but they find themselves trapped into forced labor or into sexual, sexual slavery once they get here to the United States. I have introduced legislation that would require State Department counselor official, officials to glean more information and to share more information in order to get at uh, the schemes of the syndicates that misrepresent these positions. Uh, and I hope I, uh, that we could work together on this. Uh, I know you have been focused on human trafficking as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Thank you for your leadership on this. Uh, it is really welcome. I have the privilege of chairing our, our all-government effort. The President has made this a major priority. And I chaired a meeting uh, last year in which we reviewed every single Department's efforts with respect to human trafficking. Uh, it is nothing less than modern-day slavery. There are millions of people who are the victims of uh, this uh, human trafficking. And it, it can be not just, it's not just, uh, uh, it is sometimes for sexual exploitation, but it's also for labor exploitation. And the marketplace is completely distorted and uh, violated by virtue of this practice. There are work slaves and sex slaves and other, you know, family help slaves, others, uh, it's, it's a disgrace. And your legislation and other efforts need to empower us. We need to call greater attention to it. We need greater law enforcement effort, greater awareness, education. Um, and so I appreciate your efforts on it, and we will work with you very closely. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. We, we now go to Mr. Engel of New York. 